Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and if you've got issues with your Azus motherboard because you've slapped in an i9-14900K into your system and you've been finding there are a number of issues with it that include not only the CPU running a bit hot, for example, getting up to 85 degrees or higher when under load, but also more annoyingly, those out of video memory errors that causing games to crash. This is happening in a number of Unreal Engine games, including Fortnite and others, where your games will be unstable, you may drop frames, or you may completely crash to desktop. And it happens again and again and again, and it's very frustrating. This has happened for me across multiple games, including Grey Zone Warfare, which is a new release, and that's already buggy and a little bit iffy in places. But this isn't actually the game that's causing the problem, it's actually the motherboard and the CPU. And I'm gonna show you how to fix it. And one of the simple fixes is updating your BIOS, but more on that in a second, because what you need to know is that Intel has a number of recommendations for your system in terms of the settings that you should be using. Now, if you run some benchmarks on your system, including using XTU to stress test or Cinebench to benchmark your CPU, you may well find your performance cores are getting really hot. And you can see that with Hardware Info 64, they are thermal throttling across the board. And this is obviously one of the issues. Now, this is gonna vary depending on your system and your fans and your cooler. But as you can see here, the power limit and power limit two is 4,095 watts, which is too high if you look at the table from Intel. And there are some other settings that are also causing problems with default BIOS settings. So you'll see with Cinebench, we're hitting some pretty high max temperatures. And also down here, you'll see that the power utilization is drawing 317 watts, which is higher than it should be. And this is partly what's causing your crashes. Now, obviously you're not using your system to benchmark constantly. So the main issue is games that are crashing because if you're like me, then you enjoy a good game, but you do not enjoy losing because you ended up crashing to desktop because of those out of video memory errors. Pretty frustrating experience, but it's reasonably easy to fix with this Intel baseline profile from ASUS. Now this actually allows you to drop some of the settings and improve performance. It actually surprised me because it actually resulted in a higher Cinebench score, which is unusual. So if you look on the right hand side, you'll see a slightly higher Cinebench score than previous with the default settings. With MSI, this was not the case. Now, on the BIOS settings, when you run them initially, you may find this little indicator at the bottom. So this is quite interesting, and this is before the BIOS update, but you'll see down the bottom here, it says, if you wish to follow Intel guidelines and apply stock power limits, please disable a Zeus multi-core enhancements. Make a note of that, because if you don't have the settings I'm about to show you, you can do that in theory. So first thing to do is to go into your BIOS and check your current BIOS version. You can see mine is 0801. Then we need to head over to the ASUS website for your particular motherboard. I'm using the ROG Strix Z790A Gaming Wi-Fi 2 as an example here. Head over to the support page and then driver and utility and then latest BIOS and firmware updates. Find that and download it. Obviously you want to make sure you're downloading the one for your system and the newest one because it'll update properly. So you'll see that this one reverts to factory default settings for power limits and improve stability in certain games, and it's noted there. So download that, and then we need to extract the file. So go to your downloads, right click, and click Extract All, and then extract it to a USB stick, which you've already formatted, and put it in there. Now, once this is done, you should find that you have a couple of files in there. So what I'm going to do is actually make a copy of the main cap file, and then use the BIOS renamer tool to change the name of it to A5459, which is what it defaults as, and then just delete copy off the end of that cat file. The reason for that is there's two different ways to update your BIOS that I wanna quickly show you. One is really straightforward, but a little bit more intimidating, I think, and that is using the BIOS USB port on your motherboard. So you see it marked BIOS here. What you want to do is to put your drive into that BIOS port. And then what you can do is you can press and hold 
the BIOS flashback button on your motherboard if you happen to have one and wait until the little light comes on and lets you know that's working and then it will just keep flashing while it's doing the BIOS process and then it, when it goes off it's finished. That's pretty intimidating though. I think this one is a bit more straightforward and that's going into your BIOS and then we're looking for the tool section under the advanced sections for Easy Flash 3 and in there you then find the BIOS file that we've got so the main one and then click to read it. Now you need to take care with any BIOS update that you don't power off your system while it's happening. It does take quite some time and your system will turn off and on again repeatedly. So it's best just to wait for the whole thing to finish. Don't panic at any point and just let it do it. It takes quite some time. So be patient and be careful. BIOS updates can cause problems if not done properly. And they generally warn you not to do them unless you really need to. But obviously if you've got i9 stability issues, then you definitely do need to do this BIOS update because it will help a great deal assuming that you've got the, a new BIOS update for your system. Then what you need to do is go back into the BIOS and check and look and you'll see in the top left corner we're now running BIOS version 1202. Re-enable XMP because all of your settings may have been set to default and thereby broken if you had anything else in there. For example, resizable bar may also need turning back on and that's worth doing as well. And then under the advanced section, you'll find under AI Tweaker, we have a few different things. So I mentioned earlier on ASUS Multicore Enhancement. You can see that's set as auto as default. So if you don't have this other setting I'm about to show you, set that to disabled and force all limits instead. But what we're actually looking for is the Intel baseline profile. Click on that and you'll get a little note warning you that it's going to drop performance but should improve stability. And I'm happy to report that doing this, I have indeed found that the games run a lot smoother. There's a noticeable drop in CPU temperatures as well while gaming. And more importantly, the games are now stable, which means that you can just go on and win your games without crashing and losing your progress or just letting your teammates down because you've died because you got disconnected in the middle of a fight. So we can now get some victory royales and show off to our kids. It's still worth running some tests after you've done this though. So I went back and used Intel's extreme tuning utility and the stress testing tools in there to put it through the test. And what I found is that instead of thermal throttling constantly, it's now current throttling instead. So you can see that down the bottom here, we weren't getting any thermal throttles, the CPU temps a lot lower and other things. Now again, Azus's settings aren't necessarily in line with Intel's default recommendations. So what we can do is we can go back into the BIOS and then change a few settings in here. So we obviously have the Intel baseline profile. And when you turn that on, it actually does set the multi-core enhancements to disabled. You'll notice SVID behavior is also set to Intel's fail safe. But there are some things that are worth tweaking elsewhere to match up with those specs that I showed you from Intel. Under Intel CPU power management, there are some things to tweak and to look out for as well. So you'll see we have unlimited ICC max at set to auto. We're gonna set that to disabled. Then a bit further down, you're looking at the CPU voltages. Now this is the power limit settings that you'll see in those Intel recommendations. Keep in mind that this is gonna be different depending on the i9 processor you're using. I'm going for the extreme end of the settings with an i9 14900K, but if you're using a KS variant of the i9, whether the 13900KS or 14900KS, then there might be slightly different settings. So pay attention to this table. So we're looking to manually adjust the current limits, uh, the power limits in the BIOS to make sure that they're set to the right levels according to Intel. You'll notice that the amperage was actually 280, so it was actually lower. And that's one of the reasons why Intel set out these recommendations because they found that some of the motherboard vendors are actually dialing the settings back too far for the i9, actually really reducing the performance of it in favor of that stability. So we're just looking to change the long duration power limit and the short duration power limit now as well. We're gonna manually set them to 253 watts. So you can do that in here, just type in 253 in those couple of places and then null and force those limits in there. We're also looking out for the CEP, which is the current excursion protection. Make sure that those are enabled. Now they should be by default if you've used the Intel baseline profile setting. You'll also see that TDC current limit is also set to Intel's default. But we're just going through and making sure that some of these settings are as they should be according to the recommendations. 
And a lot of them were, to be fair to Azus, with that Intel baseline profile, most of the settings are as they should have been, which makes life a lot easier because you barely have to change anything if you want to tweak the settings afterwards to go in line with Intel's baseline. Now, if you're having trouble with any of these, you can search manually. This is a tool at the top to search for it. And then you can just do that in here. So you can see like CEP, for example, the current excursion protection, you can search for that and then you can set it to enabled rather than auto or disabled. Then you can then also look for thermal velocity boost. In those settings, you will find thermal velocity boost voltage optimizations, which is set to auto or disabled. You want to set that to enabled and the same for enhanced TVB. I'm going to make sure that's set to enabled as well. Quick note that I'm not a BIOS expert, so there may well be other settings that I've missed. So make sure you check the Intel settings I mentioned earlier on for the full list. You can also search for things if you're having trouble finding them, as I've shown. One of the ones I had trouble finding, for example, is C states, which if you search states will actually come back as CPU C states. And then you can find the drop down for that and select enabled. And that's another setting changed. And then the final list, obviously, once you go to exit or up here there when you're changing it and getting ready to reset and it will show you all the things that you've changed. Once again, don't forget to turn XMP on as well if it isn't already on to make sure your RAM is running at the right speed. And then hopefully you should find that your system is a lot more stable. Now, I will say that during my testing, both the Intel setup and the Azu setup are really stable for me personally, you may want to try these on your system and see which works better. I found, for example, that stress testing with these Intel settings actually resulted in more current throttling and thermal throttling than it was with the ASUS settings. So it actually looks like the top end, maybe it's a little bit more stable with ASUS. However, what I have found is that gaming on either profile was perfectly fine, much more stable than it was before, cooler and yet i'm not losing loads of fps from doing this so that's definitely beneficial and having a more stable system is definitely of benefit hopefully you found this video useful if you did let me know in the comments down below and just put a comment there to support the channel and help boost this up so other people see it because they'll no doubt be grateful as well this has been the provoke prawn thanks very much for watching You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.